Okay, all of that was fan language. Hi, how are you? Sherilyn, welcome to Makeup University. Hey, I have a little bit of a recap and a share from a recent trip to Nashville, Tennessee. Again, more fan language. I had the pleasure of visiting the Bell Mead Historical Site and Winery in Nashville, Tennessee. That is where I purchased this little beauty. There's a way to just like snap it open. Okay, I'm practicing. I'm not going to anybody's ball, but uh, yeah. I thought this was really fun. I love history. <laughs> I love a wine tour. I was there with the channel Let's Make Food from Food, and we did some videos for her channel, but you won't see them. I've got to get better at my fan for some time. Muddled Up Fridays is coming out. I'll link them when they're live, but I am a wine drinker. <laughs> I don't have time for all that cut and clip. Stab and snap. Here we go. So I purchased this at the Bell Mead Winery. You don't remember what it costs. I want to say it was $28.99 or maybe it was $24.99. Here's what it wasn't. $10. And if you'll notice closely, look at his left hand inside his jacket. That is... <laughs> it's so bad at this. Scandalous! You know what the left hand in the jacket means, don't you? I know you do. Okay, so today we're going to do both a wine tasting. Look, I'm talking to you with my fan. Tell me if you know what those signs are. And then I'm going to do a little short lesson with you as I educate myself and you. The traditional hand fan, fanology, the language of fans. Charles Francis Bedini put together fanology or ladies conversation fan. I'm reading it off of this right here. It was published by William Cock in London in 1797. This code of fan gestures developed from ladies sending signals to gentlemen when silence was the norm. But communication was imperative, scandalous. Blow are some of the fan signals and their meaning. The very first one I'm gonna share with you, the fan placed near the heart. But it doesn't say open or close. So maybe it means open, because the below instruction is, says close. So the fan placed near the heart, you have won my love. Oh, red wine, how you have won my love. <laughs> okay, then the second is a closed fan touching the right eye. I'm going to say to the side of the eye, I cannot imagine any lady in her beautiful ball gown. <laughs> but you never know. Uh, a closed fan touching the right eye. When may I be allowed to see you? Interesting. Half open fan pressed to the lips. You may kiss me. Scandalous. Hands clasped together, holding an open fan, like this. This means, forgive me. Interesting. Well, last one before we do a quick tasting is hiding the eyes behind an open fan means I love you. Really? <laughs> okay, I love you. Oh, interesting. Okay, we'll come back to more of this. Shedding a fully opened fan slowly. This will be the last one. So if this is I love you, shedding a opened fan very slowly is I promise to marry you. Scandalous. Welcome the Bell Mead Founders Red American Merlot 2017. You have to know, this is bottled for Bell Mead Winery. Ooh, did I sound like Moira? I've been missing Moira. But the grapes are actually from Lodi. I say Lodi, do you say Lodi? I say Lodi, California. So let us get our jelly jar out and look at the color. I tried four wines that day. And there was a 
Chardonnay, which you know I'm not going to buy that. If I could, I would have bought all four, but I, the shipping back was quite pricey. And then I can only fit so much in my suitcase. Yes, I'm on Southwest, so bags fly free. Thank you for transparency, Southwest. No, they're not sponsoring this video, but the point is I really couldn't pack back four bottles of wine in my suitcase. So anywho, uh, I did like the Chardonnay. It had a very fresh, crisp taste. Then there was a muscadine grape that actually is grown there in Tennessee that they make a wine with. And it had a funny finish when the girl next to me was tasting it. Not let's make food from food with Michelle. It was another girl standing there and she's like, wow, this really tastes like that liquid yellow stuff you put on popcorn at the movie theater. I was like, well, that's interesting. So I took a sip and I had the same finish on my palate. I was like, I taste movie theater butter flavoring it was weird but this is founders red grapes are from lodi this is a 17 the smell is good i already know this has a dry finish are you ready Ooh, good it's sharp this is a steak wine if, or a bacon wine if ever there was one little details on the bottle so again so here's the thing, it, based on my, my thoughts, if you wanted to buy it, you can buy it off their website. In 1806, John Harding purchased 200 acres with a log cabin on the Natchez Trace. Some 30 years later, he had transformed the land into the stately and sprawling farm known as Bell Mead, which translates to beautiful meadow. A hard and constant worker, it was said that John had never been seen resting on one foot or the other. At the age of 70, ooh, Bootsy, let's drink to him. Having retired from his management of Bell Mead, he was encouraged to take to the rocking chair. Instead, he gathered eight laborers and set out to clear a rugged piece of land he'd newly purchased in Arkansas. The Founders Red is a single varietal Merlot with bold flavors of ripe raspberry, licorice, and white pepper. Ooh, okay, the white pepper and the um, licorice really comes through. Really strong. So, I do like it. Uh, I liked it that day. I like it now. Uh, it's a true story. I was planning to grill hot dogs for dinner. So, I'm going to go have a Hebrew National and another glass of Bell Mead. Uh, the thing that really stuck me about this was just this gorgeous historic property huge lush green beautiful they had a massive magnolia tree i love the magnolia tree they had a massive tree and someone in our tour group said how tall is that because it was taller than the two-story house and the tour guide said well they top out to maturity at 55 feet and i did not measure it but I bet that tree was 55 feet and it was amazing. So let us continue on with our fan. And that is drawing the fan across the eyes means I'm sorry. But is it like this, like in Pulp Fiction? Ah! Or <laughs> is it, I don't know, it's not clear. I'm reading off of this and then so I bet you could look up fanology. Then resting the fan on the right cheek is yes. And it, it doesn't say yes if it's open or closed. So maybe it is this. Resting the fan on the right cheek is yes. Resting the fan on the left cheek is no. Fanning slowly is I am married. Fanning quickly is I'm engaged. Putting the fan handle to the lips means kiss me. Opening a fan wide means wait for me. Placing the fan behind the head with the finger extended. Placing the fan behind the head with the finger extended means goodbye. That is quite, quite the salutation. Fan in the right hand in front of the face means follow me. And again, I'm gonna, it doesn't say close, so I'm going to assume this means open so follow me fan in the left hand in front of face I am desirous of your acquaintance 
Interesting, isn't it? Fan held over the left ear. Or like this. I wish to get rid of you. <laughs> Twirling the fan in the left hand, we are being watched. Twirling the fan in the right hand, or is it like this? I love another. Mm. Carrying the open hand, open fan in the right hand, you are too willing. But if you carry the open fan in the left hand, it means come and talk to me. So is it like this, or is it if down by your side, or is it closed, come and talk to me? Interesting. So then drawing the fan through the hand, I hate you. What a thing to say, even with a fan. Drawing the fan across the cheek. What do you mean across the cheek? Means I love you and presenting the fan shut. Do you love me? <laughs> so interesting. So anyhow, this was just a historical toy I bought at the gift shop there at Bell Mead. Uh, what struck me during the tour of the house, which was so beautiful. We stop when we first walk in, we look up and there is a portrait of a horse. And the horse's name is Bonnie Scott. Remember that, Bonnie Scott. Look it up because then the tour guide began to just name the horses. Bonnie Scott begat secretariat, begat, and it just goes down the line to name, name a triple crown winner and sired through the legacy of Bonnie Scott. Not just the Derby, not just the Belmont, not just Preakness. These major champions came out of Bonnie Scott from Belmead. Amazing. This got long. I'm going to go. Uh, happy Wine Wednesday. The Founders Wine from Belmead is a lovely sip. I'm looking forward to enjoying this with my hot dogs. And this fan and fanology, uh, I, would, I have seen... At the intricately designed and painted fans. This is like balsa wood, like in another gift shop, this might be, especially since with my son, in another gift shop, this would be a submarine or an airplane to be built at home. And instead, I have the traditional fan. I love it. Fanology. Oh, to communicate like that. What if there was a trend of texting fan signals? Like you would do the open fan, or you would do the face and then the fan on the left, or the fan on the right, or open or close. I don't know what's about. This got long. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for letting me share my experience in Nashville, Tennessee at Bell Mead with you. The wine is wonderful. The fanology is fun. And I'm going to do a little more study on this. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, why don't you? Why not? Sip a little wine with me, learn a little fanning with me, and stay tuned for more videos. Hey everybody, thank you for watching. I'm Cheryl Lynn. This is Makeup University. Remember, you look really gorgeous today.